have lots of discussion to do what happened last time, and let's go forward with that one. And what happened was this, that after when a column become long, I cannot put as much as load as if I want to crush it. Because when the low column is very short column, the material, you are going to compress it, yes or no? So the material is going to be crushed. Is that correct or not? So therefore, before you do it, if the column become long, before you get to that reach, before you reach that, it's going to buckle. And because of the buttering, the P critical is much less than P of the crushing. Everybody, what was the formula I gave you? We drove that formula. P critical was? Yeah, that's right. P, P critical was? Depend on pi, of course, pi is a fixed number, doesn't matter. Depend on the modulus of? Notice that if from material to material, this behavior is different. Is that correct? Because E comes into the picture, which is something we didn't have before. Everybody understand that. So a aluminum column buckles differently from a steel column, from a wood column, from a concrete column. There are codes after codes and theories after theories for each one of them. I want you to understand that this is very difficult phenomena to discuss. It's a very diff uh, mathematically a little bit complex, as you will see it today at to, with the discussion. However, what we said that, that the column is not supposed to buckle. Everybody understand that if it is a centric load, why should it buckle? It should, the sigma equal to P over A, and it's supposed to be the same everywhere, yes or no? However, when I in start increasing the little load, nothing happens. If I increase and increase, increase, those things, my load is suddenly it become a sudden and huge deformation. It has nothing to do with the bending. Everybody understands. It looks like bending, because it look, but it actually goes through a huge deformation. Why? Because we end up with a Y solution for our differential equation equal to A times sine lambda x. And A was not defined. A could be any number, 10, 10,000, 100,000. So if that's the case, I can have a Y there. But the formula that we end up based on this deformation was pi squared EI divided by L squared. OK? So L was the length of the column. We drove this. And this formula only for the column, which was, write it down. This is a discussion we are going to have today. This will be pin pin, because the boundary condition that I used previously was at x equal to 0, y equal to 0, at x equal to l, y equal to 0. That means this is pin and this is pin. And column usually do not behave like that. Is that correct or not? And then we end up with P critical, pi squared, E i, L squared. That was the end of last lecture. However, notice that therefore P critical, aside from depending on the modulus of elasticity, which is type of material, depends on the value of i, yes or no. Therefore, if I have, write it down, this is the part of length. If I have a square cross section, this is the cross section of a column, like this. If I have a Everybody see that straw cross section? Doesn't matter whether it buckles about x and y. I don't know. It's going to buckle either about x axis or because I don't control it, it is happen by itself. Is that correct or not? Therefore, doesn't matter whether I go x and y. The circle is the same way. Is the circle is the same way, x and y. However, as soon as I use a cross section like that is obviously because that depends on the value of i and this has two i i x and i y so which one should i use of course the smaller one because if i use a smaller one i use a small because this item is not going if you have an item like this like uh, one of this, as I broke it before too. <laughs> if I have item like this with this kind of crosser, it's not going to buckle this way. It's going to buckle this way. Yes or no? It goes like that. Is that correct or not? Therefore, it's buckled about the right it down in your. It's always buckled about the weakest axis. And this one, IY, is much smaller than IX. Everybody knows that 112 of base time hype Q. IX is, this one, IX, is much larger than IY. Is that correct or not? Yes or no? Therefore, if you have a column like that, which is what? Forget about the white part, red part. This, this column is a 
white flange beam. Is that correct? And you put it this way and you load, put a load at the center. Which way is going to buckle? This way or that way? You see, the beam was like that. Is that correct? Because why? This was the strongest I. Is that correct or not? I, Y is less than, look at the table. I, Y is one fifth, one tenth of I, X. Is that correct or not? Therefore, if all the boundary condition is the same, this one is going to buckle this way, not this way. Is that correct or not? It's going to buckle, not about the X axis. In other words, I can draw it here. If you, this is the cross section. I see you put it like this. Let's actually, let's do it in real life. So if this is your column, you are designing this column as a, your, your system. So and this is x, and this is z, and this is y. That's the y. And you are putting here a load p. Is that correct or not? That's what I'm asking you. This column is going to buckle about the z axis, because i z is much less than I X. That's why we use it this way for the beam. You see, we used it this way. We use it for the beam like that. The beam was like that. The cross section was always like this. Is that correct or not? Because I X, you never do it the other way. Is that the other way? It would be a silly design. Is that correct or not? However, for the column, I I have no choice because this is the profile I'm buying from there from manufacturing. So what should I do about it? Now, there is, there is two ways to remedy that. One way, as you see in one of your handout, I gave you a handout. Take a look at the handout. Here it is. I have a few extra one. Everybody has the handout that, you know, the handout that was print, put it in the. Thank you. Yeah. I don't know my iPad. OK, take one and send it the rest of it over. Anybody here? Come on, share it. Okay. Anybody here? You have your you have it in your cut there? You have it there. Okay. So you can look there. No problem there. <laughs> I have three more left. Anybody? Or if you have it in your computer, take a look at that. So therefore, one way of doing it, if I have this one, so it is, as you see, it is weaker about this axis than this axis to what I do. I put one plate here, I put one plate here, one plate there, yes or no, that it become a more stronger now in the y direction. Is that correct? Or it become like a box. Is that correct? But this is very inexpensive what I doing it by welding a plate all the way here on one, this side of a column and a plate on the other side of them. Hopefully, Ix become near the Iy, because otherwise, I'm wasting my material. I'm not utilizing the material. I buy very expensive column, but I'm using on the weaker side. This is, this is a column under eccentric lo centric loading, and it's going, if the Iz, let's say it is equal to a one-fifth of Ix, so this is not a good design. Everybody understand what I'm saying. That therefore, by adding this plate here and this plate here, maybe I X and I the other one maybe are equal or near each other. So it's one remedy. Another remedy is to change the boundary condition, which I'm going to talk about it in a minute. Is that understood? Yes or no? Correct. So therefore, there are lots of problems that you need to combine profile together to make a column. That means you have to be very good with your Parallel axis theorem. Theorem. theorem, which all of us know by now. Is that correct or not? Yeah, OK. So that become involved here. Now, let's go back again to the theory. One more thing that is involved here is this. Now, if I want to look at this problem, this problem for, was for pin-pin scenario, yes or no? And also, there is two variables now. Pin-pin, one variable. Then L, then I, yes or no? There are too many variables. So in many times, we do this. We are going to change I with the radius of gyration. Remember radius of gyration in a static? <coughs> Vaguely, you heard, heard about it, yes or no? At least, you don't remember what it was, correct? So anyhow, R in general equal to I divided by area. Remember that formula? But R could be Rx, Ix, Ry, Ry, whatever <coughs> axis you have, you have to put it there. So there is two R over there. These are all given in the table as well. Is that correct in the back of the book? So R is the radius of gyration. 
since I need the i here, I have to square this. So r squared become equal to i over a, or i become equal to a times r squared. By putting a r squared here, so crossing this r, so become a r squared. My p critical, which I'm going to put it here, my p critical become equal to pi squared, which is constant. E is constant, doesn't depend on the x or y axis or z axis. And then A, which is constant, then the denominator, I bring this on the de here on the denominator of the denominator, or I write it as L over R square. R actually is in the numerator. So we write it that way. In this format, it is only one parameter, and that is L over R. And all the buckling formula is based on this L over R ratio. So please write it down. L over R ratio is slenderness, slenderness ratio. It's a ratio, length over length. It has to be inch over inch or millimeter over millimeter. So, but you have two of them, one for the x direction, one for the, for example, in this case, one for the x direction, one for the uh, y or z, depends what you want to call. Is that correct or not? Yes? And that slenderness ratio defines our system. Now, here is the formula. So please always use this if you can. This is the same earlier formula, but write in, this is two variable, i and l. This is one variable, so that's the same formula, Euler formula. And then, of course, sigma critical. Of course, sigma critical is equal to p critical over the area because it's centric loading, yes or no? Yes, so all I have to do, divide this one by A, which become equal to pi square E, A disappears, L over R square. Then I have one more problem, and the other problem, so this is really the same divided by A, so you don't have to, remember. that was the original formula, that's the system we are going to use. Now, the only other, other part you want to add to your note, what about the boundary condition? When I drove all this equation, this P critical, this part, I said it a minute ago, let's rewrite it there. This is pin roller or pin pin scenario because my load was like that. Is that correct or not? Yes? Correct. What happened if I have a column which is fixed free. Can I use the same formula or not? No. Obviously not, because that was pin pin. I use here I have to restart the whole problem and rewrite my equation with the same format, the same form, but use the uh, different boundary condition because here totally the boundary condition is different. The slope is zero, y is zero at the, this end, not the other end. So but what happened here is something we want to look at. Let's say that we said this one is going to go through the formation or through the buckling like that. Is that correct? Which is pin, pin scenario. Everybody see that? This will probably, if I put it under a load like that, this way or that way again, we cannot. This is fixed. So it's going to go like that. Is that correct? Because this is, has to be zero slope. Is that correct or not? Yes? Correct? Now, is this? Like that, half of that, everybody see what I'm talking about? Yes or no? So in order to make this deformation like this, if this length is L, I have to add this to it. Everybody understand that? As if the effective length is how much? The effective length is 2L. You see, this curve is exactly look like this curve in shape. Is that correct or not? So we are adjusting this by this theory. We can accept that. So here, write it down. K factor, we say K factor. If it is pin, pin, K factor equal to one, because that's what we draw it. Here, K factor become equal to what? Look, two, everybody see that? So because two L, because this L effective, let's put it this way, L effective become equal to L. Here, L effective actually equal to two L, or K must be equal to? Two, is that correct? Because it's fixed free, in other words, when it is fixed free, it is easier to buckle. Everybody, because the top of it could easily sway. Is that correct or not? Therefore, instead of 1L, I, so from now on, 
change all your equation to L effective. When I put L effective, I'm also considering my boundary condition. It could be pin pin, k equal to 1. If it is fix free, k equal to 2. Another one is fix. This is the one that if I had time, I probably would drive it. I do not have the time. This is roller. This is a fix. So it goes like that and comes like this. Is that correct or not? Yes, because this is fixed. This one become effectively k value become 0.7 or L effective equal to 0.7 L. So that's k will be given to you. You don't have to worry about Actually, it is in your handout. It will be in formula sheet will be given to you in the final. You don't have to remember it, but you have to be aware of it. What kind of boundary condition you have? Is that correct or not? Yes? Depend what country condition. There is one more, of course, is fix and fix, which is the safest of all. So if you get a column here, which is fix, let's put it this way, fix and fix, so it's not going anywhere, <coughs> fix and fix, so which goes like that. So it goes zero, then it goes like that, then come back to zero. Everybody understand that? The middle two-third, one, uh, one half of it becomes similar to the other <coughs> one. So this becomes L effective. So L effective equal to half the L or K value equal to 0.5. So it is the safest of all. The more K I have, of course, the larger the L become. The larger the L become, the smaller the C critical. Everybody else. So the safest one will be what? Fix, fix. Then will be what? Then will be pin, pin. Then it would be. Oh, sorry, other way around. Other way around. This way. This will be first. This will be second. This will be third. This will be fourth. Is that correct or not? The larger the L is, the worse the scenario it is. Is that correct or not? Yes? So we have to consider all. For that reason, you have to go to the L effective and you do that. Then there is one more discussion, which is obvious, so I'm going to erase that. Now, remember, this is given in your handout, given in the book. And it will be given to you when you, you don't have to go through the equation again and again because we already drove it once, so we can apply it to other boundary conditions by this little theory. However, what was at the end says if I use L effective, now I can draw that in this equation, I can plot it. If I plot the equation of sigma, I'm plotting this, which is sigma versus Le over R. Is that understood that Le over R is the slenderness ratio of the column? The not column, not necessarily. If a column is tall, but it's very heavy, it's not as a slender, which is this tall, but it's very narrow. Everybody understand? Because I consider in both the length and the moment of inertia of the cross section. So a slenderness ratio is typically is that in people is like that. Though. You see a very tall people, it may not look may look very slender because depend on whether, you know, how heavy in, everybody understand that. A shorter guy may look much slender than the heavier guy with a football player. Everybody understand what I'm saying there. So a slenderness ratio consider both the height and the cross section in the form of I is as understood. Yes or no? So one parameter. Now, what happened here, if I plot this, notice this is very obvious. If Le over R is huge, I make a very, very tall column of 100 feet long. Obviously, I can put zero load here. If this is infinity, this is zero. Yes or no? Correct or no? So you, the curve start from here. Means for a very, very tall column, it's useless. You cannot put any load in it. Then it becomes less and less, so it goes up to here. By definition, when Le over R becomes zero, this sigma becomes infinity, yes or no? So in other words, it starts from there, and it goes to there. Is that correct or not? However, it cannot go there because I'm limited to sigma yield. Is that It cannot go beyond the sigma yield. So what happened here is this, that this is the plot of Euler formula. Sigma versus curve. But the limit is when sigma become, so in other words, when it becomes too short, this is short column. When the column becomes short, it's not going, nothing going to happen because I'm limited to here. When sigma yield, this sigma 
become sick by yield, it means the column is already being crushing before it. Buckle is that cause. So very short column is going to be crushed. When it says reach to the certain leg and above, the, the, the load becomes, the sigma become less and less. And further you go down here, the sigma become less and sigma equal to what? Sigma equal to P over A. Means you can put less and less load on it. So when it is too tall, no load in it. Is that correct or not? So now let's practice that. So this is the plot of formula. Remember that. Remember, put it in your note. It is limited to what? Limited to? Sigma yield, of course, sigma yield is different from material to material. Again, the material becomes an, an, another issue because it's represented in the formula with modulus of elasticity. Is that correct or not? So even from the different grade of a steel, it's going to behave differently. Everybody understand that. that. That's the problem that everybody has. I remember as I was when I was a student, I came to this country back in 1960 early 1960. And then I saw in the lab lots of people doing all this work doing here where I was ended. I had a friend, a, a tall fellow, and I, I talked to him. I said, what are you doing? I said, we are doing buckling testing. And you go to the school, some of the schools who are doing research work, still they are testing, but they haven't got anywhere yet, not yet. So we will see when I talk about empirical formula. You see, that means that in a minute, also we are going to talk about centric loading, and we are going to go towards eccentric loading. At the end of the discussion, I'm going to do, none of them is going to work, because the test results are not confirming that. Therefore, we are going to use a empirical formula just for designing. Everybody understand that will be the end of next uh, class lecture. We get there, hopefully. Everybody understand that. But th nevertheless, let's see what happened and why this is all happening. Now, notice it is, this is the scenario. Let's go to an example. Now, example, as I said, I have several simple examples that you don't have to worry about it. So this is one of the simple examples. You can do it by yourself. Let's say that you have here a column here. Let's say it is three inches by six inch column. Obviously, it is going to buckle about this axis. Yes or no? Correct? And then depends on the type of connection. If this is fixed and the top is free and you put here P there, so depend on the length. Let's say the length here is six feet long and this is three inches and this is six foot down. So this is obvious what I have to do. First of all, I calculate L effective. L effective is fixed free, so it is not six feet, it is 12 feet. So you calculate that one. Then you can use either this formula or that formula or the original formula. You have the area, you have that one, and then you calculate LE over R about the Y axis. Is that correct or not? Yes? And you put it there, and then you calculate your P critical. P critical is somewhere here. Is that correct? Which is a very simple problem. I noticed a couple of students came to my office, and they said already they have done homework number one and number two, because that's really a very simple scenario. Is that correct or not? What puts students into trouble sometimes, not all the time, but that also is the problem of this sort. So I'm going to do problem number. The same idea It's a little bit more fancier than what you just, I just mentioned that. And that is problem number 18 in your book. So please go, I don't have a copy of that. Please go to problem number 18 in your book. I thought if I do that, I have covered all the bases. Everybody understand what I'm saying that because this one is a different sort of type of problem, but it is the same idea. Anyhow, what they have done here, here they put two channel here, back to back like this, two channel here, back to back like this. And they make one column out of that. Is that understood? Yes, so this is problem number 18 in your book. Is that yes. correct or not? Actually, if you look problem number top of that 17, you see the same one in my handout. Did you see that? that the plate that they added the plate in order ix and iy become equal this is a little bit different so notice they put some part here they call it lattice so that lattice does only connect these two together but does not add to your strength so we see the picture there in 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 vertical format you see this channel and the other channel 
So there are line going like this. Everybody, so, so you have seen it sometime in the construction. You will see that that they are line. But those are only to connect in the two channel together. Does not add to your strength of the column. Is that understood? Yes or no? So don't worry about that part. So only about cross section. Now what the cross section looks like is this. The cross section. When I draw this cross section, the way it's drawn in the book is looks something like that. Is that correct or not? Yes. This is looking from top. And this distance is given D. Is that correct or not? And these channels are given at C217.1. That means the height of this is approximately 200. The weight of that is 17.1 kilogram per meter, because this is metric system. Is that correct or not? Remember how we're designing the beam at the earlier class here, yes? I beam or etc. This is the channel. Yes or no? They put it together. These are the data you want to write it down. So D is given equal to 100. Uh, this 100 millimeter, 20 millimeter. Yes, 100 millimeters. So the distance between this, these two is 100 millimeter. Then let's say that E is given equal to 200 G Pascal. Means this is a steel, a standard steel A. Uh, ASTM A36, and effective length. Notice they did not give you the boundary condition, but they give you effective length, so so be it. Many of problems are like that, so read the question carefully. Sometimes they give you the length, and they tell you what type of boundary condition you have. Sometimes they give you the effective length. Is that correct or not? Effective length is given 8.2 meter. And they said with a factor of safety of 1.85, calculate P allowable. How much load can I put at the center of this column, which is here? Everybody understand what centroid of these two columns. Yes or no? However, it is not obvious which way it's going to buckle. I don't know anything about that. I have to use parallel axis. Theorem, but this is what I know. I have to go to the table, look up for this information here, yes or no? That one, I'm going to put it down here. So the information for that one is the following. Please write it down. So this is C217.1. The area is given equal to 2,170 millimeter square. The depth, I don't need it here. If I need it, I will pick it up. Ix, this is Ix. Ix is given equal to 13 and a half times 10 to the power of 6 millimeter to the power of 4. Now, the centroid is here. So in the book, this is Iy. This has nothing to do with our picture, everybody. This is what you see in the <coughs> table, and you have to read it correctly. Is that correct? The table is in the back of the book. Yeah. Remember, we use that for the design of the beam. We use it for design of anything. Is that correct? Or this is L shape, angles, all sorts of things we can put together to create a new column. Is that correct? Or not? So be aware of that. So you may see all of that. IY is given equal to much, of course, everybody knows that IX is much larger than IY. So IY is given equal to uh, 0.545 times 10 to the power of 6 millimeter. And we need this distance, which they call it X bar. So that distance of X bar is also given 14 and a half millimeter from the centroid to the edge of the column. That's given. I need that. All right. So based on this scenario, we want to calculate how much P we can put here with a factor of safety of 8.1.85. Is that understood? So obviously, all I have to calculate is Ix and Iy. There is nothing else. As above the others, is the formula. I plug it in the formula. Yes or no? So for this problem, in order to calculate Ix, this is my Ix. Let's assume this is my IY, this is the new one. This has nothing to do with the table. That's the table. This is your picture. Is that correct or not? It's your homework or that your assignment. Is that correct or not? Now, what's the new IX? Is that correct? So you have to use parallel access theory or not. That's your decision. What's your new IX? And why? Come on, Rod. You have to answer. Give me right here. It's just double, right? What? IX would just be double. 
Double it, just double it. Did you see everybody that? I cannot put that in your, if you don't know it, you have a problem here. You, any of the whole t column problem is like that. Why it is double? Very good. This is the centroid of this whole section. Yes or no? This is the center of this one. This is the center of them. All of them are on the same line. Therefore, all of them are in the same line. What happened there? Okay. <laughs> okay. No. Don't, don't just walk on it. So, <laughs> so therefore, all I have to add is 2i. Is that correct or not? Yes? Correct? Everybody with me? Everybody with me? Yes. yes. Okay, yes. good. <laughs> so Ix equal to 2 of the other one because this is all I need with respect to here. This x is this x. Is that correct? Exactly the same. But there are two of them. So 2 times, how much was it? Uh, 13 and a half times 10 to the power of 6. So it becomes 27 times 10 to the power of 6. So the combining these two together, I get Ix twice as much, of course. How about Iy? Can I say I Y equal to us twice as much? No, no. no because of parallel axis no. theory. I Y, actually what I have there is not this Y. I have this Y, which I should call it Y prime or Y C. Is that correct or not? Yes? Sorry, we couldn't wait for you. <laughs> All right, is that correct? Yes? So therefore, what should I put here? First of all, you put two there because there are two of them. One on the left, one on the right. Then you put I Y prime because Y prime passes through the centroid. Yes or no? Help coming. <laughs> okay. All right. So I Y prime. What's I Y prime? I Y prime is four, five. Is that correct or not? Yes. Point. 5, 4, 5 times 10 to the power of 6 plus what? Because I have now a distance d. The distance d is not this, that d. The distance is the, the distance between y and y prime. Multiplied by area. The area is 2,170. Yes or no? Times what? Distance square. Distance square is what? No, this is half of D. The D was how much? D was 100. So it is 50. 50 plus this distance or this distance doesn't make it, which is 14 and half. So that is how it works. 14 and half to the power of 2. A D squared, which is the definition of the moment of inertia. And if you have any difficulty with parallel axis theory, come to this Thursday. ME 214 class, <laughs> if you want to. Because <laughs> I'm teaching them parallel axis theory and showing them how to use it. Is that, but I'm sure, I'm joking, I'm sure you all know that. Is that correct or not? Or at least I'm hoping that everybody knows that. Practice tell me a few people have problem there. Is that understood? Yes or no? I use moment of ratio with respect to y prime and shift it here with ad square. Is that correct or not? Correct? Yes, so anyhow, you calculate that one, and that one become equal to I, Y, is become 19 point, oh, equal to 19.2 times 10 to the power of 6 millimeters. So which way is buckle now? I have to compare now this to which way is going to buckle. It still is going to buckle about the y. y axis, because that's the weakest axis. Is that correct or not? Yes? So that's the end of the story. Really, the problem was not using that equation. The equa problem was equal, calculate Ix and Iy. Is that correct or not? Then you can put it this equation, or if you don't have Le over R for this one, because the, uh, the Le over R is not a subject here, because L effective was given. Everybody understands. So I can use the old equation. So the old equation, this is the answer. The old equation was P critical. Let's put number there. P critical was equal to pi. I put it here, P critical was equal to pi squared EI over L effective square. Is that the first time I gave you? Is that correct before I change it to L over R? Is that correct or not? Because I have all the number. I have the I and I have the L effective. Is that correct or not? Yes? OK, so it becomes 3.14 square times E. This is still, so E must be 200 G Pascal times 10 to the power of 9 
multiplied by i. Now we use this i, not that i, which is 19.2 times what? Times 10 to the power of? Not plus 6, because this is Pascal. This is, you have kilonewton. The unit of E is Pascal. Pas is Pascal is Newton per meter square. So the I and everything should be, A, I, everything should be in meter, yes or no? Mm -hmm. But since I have it in millimeter square, all I, I showed you last time what to do, or we have done that in the past, all I have to change, go from plus 6 to <laughs> minus 6. That's very good. So, but I have seen lots of error here and there. So now I am unit by unit works, all Newton and meter, so which is unit of Pascal, divided by Le, which should be in meter. Is that correct or not? What's the meter? Is 8.2 to the power of 2. So that is your P critical for this column with that length, like that, with that uh, effective length, actually. And P critical comes out to be equal to when you solve it, 562 times 10 to the power of 3 Newton or equal to 562 kilonewton. And since you need P allowable, that was the question. So it is 562 divided by 1.85. That was the factor of safety was given. Therefore, <coughs> it is 303 kilonewton. That's the end of this problem, but I want you to go back to the theory, to see where we are. Are we, notice if this P critical or sigma critical you are calculating is above sigma yield, you should not worry about buckling. We didn't check that one. Is that correct? Of course, it is obvious this is going to go through the buckling, but let's do that. Here, sigma critical become equal to, of course, sigma critical is force over area. Is that correct or not? So if you calculate that, the force equal to 562 times 10 to the power of 3 Newton divided by area, which is 2 times 2,170 times 10 to the power of minus 6. That's the area. You calculate that one. And that one become equal to sigma critical, become 119 megapascal. Notice what we are saying that we have not reached two sigma yield. We are way down there. Is that correct or not? Because the sigma critical cannot reach to uh, what I didn't put sigma, sigma. Let me give you sigma as well there. I put E here. So sigma yield for still is 250 megapascal. If you look on the table for a standard still, sigma yield is 36 KSI or 250 mega. Pascal, we use it a lot in the past. Is that correct or not? So for, in order to be crushing, I have to have my sigma equal to 250. Where we are? We are at 190. So we are somewhere here. Everybody understand that. We are at 190. Here is 250. Is that correct or not? Therefore, it is buckling. It is not there. But don't assume that every column goes to buckle. If it is short column, it may crush before the so you always have to check that at the end. Is that correct or not? Yes? Correct? Now, can you calculate how much force, how much force can I put in this column? If it was very short, it was only, let's say, half a meter long. Of course, if sigma would be equal to P over A, lecture 1, ME 218. Yes or no? Correct? But sigma yield is 200. 50. So here it is. I want you to compare that. You see what we end up here is how many? Kilonewton, we end up 560 for the buckling. Yes or no? 303 is a safe load. This is the difference. 562 causes this column to buckle. Everybody understand that. But if it was not the phenomenon of buckling, or if it was the short column, then I have sigma equal to P over A. Is that correct or not? Yes? In order sigma to reach to sigma yield, let's see what P we need. P equal to sigma yield, which is 250 megapascal times the area, which is 2 times 2,170 times 10 to the power of minus 6 meter squared. This and this drops out. So that you calculate that one. That is 1,085 kilonewton. You see this versus 600? 
562. Everybody understand. Almost is double. So as you see, we are halfway there. Is that good? We make it shorter and shorter. This goes higher and higher until it crushes. We make it longer and longer. This is the same cross section, the same material, but longer and longer. It right, less and less. It goes here. You go down here. You cannot put a few kilo, kilo newton. Is that's the end of it? Is that correct? Did you understand the concept? Yes. Okay, next problem. So let's look at now the handout. Look at the second hand, the handout, the first problem on your handout, which is similar to some of your homework. Actually, this could be in your book too, because I copied that for the, when we were teaching the Hitler book, I copied that from this book to give it to the other student, but this, this similar to that example is in your, you know, that's why I gave you a handout. You can share it together. Here it is. That's, oh, you have yours? Okay, take a look at that one. This problem is a little bit different. The same idea, everything. There are at least five, six, seven problems that you have to consider all of this and go through that. But look at this problem. Everybody has a copy of that on hand, which is this problem, which is a rod with this cross section. Is that correct or not? Yes or no, correct? And this side is fixed to the wall. Is that correct or not? But this side is pinned, but there is a plate here, the plate point, and there is a pin going through. Is that correct or not? And you are putting here a load, eccentric load at the center of that one. And the question is, I believe, finding how much load we want to put there. So that's the calculating the P. Yes. This is similar to problem, I don't know, one of each. So let's look at the cross section. Look, the cross section is a rectangular cross section, so I'm going to show it a little bit bigger here. This is two inch by one inch size. Obviously, there is an IX here, and there is, let's say, let's, I call this one Z, because usually we call this one X, so this is Y, so remember, this is Y, and this is Z. I'm using the standard X, Y, and Z, you can change it if you want. So the cross section, when I show this cross section, that cross section, this will be the Z, Z axis, and this will be the Y, Y axis with the dimension put there as two inches and one inch. Is that correct or not? Yes? Now, let's calculate a few things. First of all, the area. The area is equal to one, two by one, so is it two inch square? Now, let's calculate IZ. The IZZ or IZ axis equal to what? 112 of, 112 of base, which is 1, times 2 to the power of 3. Yes or no? Correct? Which is 2 thirds of inch to the power of 4. IY, which is this way, which is less, should be less, is equal to 112 of 2 one to the power of three, because that's the base, that's the height. And that becomes one-sixth of inch, to, which is much smaller. Everybody see that? Yes? Obviously, this is going to buckle. If nothing else, I will consider nothing else. This is going to buckle about the y-axis. So in other words, if this was the, that plate sitting there, it's going to buckle like that or like this. Is that correct or not? Yes? Correct? Because that's the y-axis. However, look at the picture there. What you see here, is this fixed? And this is pin, or it looks like pin. Is that correct? Because that's the way we showed it in the past. But I give you now the bad news or good news. This is not fixed pin. In one direction is fixed pin. In the other direction is fixed fix. Do you see that? Look in this direction, which is the buckling about the z-axis. Everybody see that? Everybody see that? This is the buckling about the z-axis. It is fixed pin, but it's nothing prevent that from going like that. This is fixed, but this is pin. Everybody understand that? So write it down. In the z-direction, in the z-axis, or for the z-axis, L effective is equal to fixed pin. So it is L effective is 0.7 times the length was given equal to 10 feet, I believe, yes or no? Yeah, 10 feet. So 10 times 12 inches, so 120 inches. So that will be your L effective. Is that correct or not? Yes? 
because it buckles like that. Now, buckling this way, those two plate here, although it looks like a pin, but uh, this is what somebody asked me whether this is get closer to the real life. I said, yes, this is something we always consider as fixed pin, fixed pin. Now, one direction is fixed pin, the other direction is fixed, fixed, because two plate going like that, and you tighten this bolt there. Everybody understand that this side has not, not have room to rotate. Is that because those two plate, if it is tight there, will not let it rotate. Is that correct or not? So in the, when it wants to buckle about the Y direction, which is this buckling. Everybody see that? Yes? The buckle like this or like that, either way. So in the Y axis, so put it there. Or L effective is fixed, fixed is 0.5 times 120 inches. Is that correct or not? Yes? So this one become 60 inch F L effective. <coughs> this one is 120 times 0.7, which is 84 inches. Yes? Correct? Now, which way it buckles? What's the key here? The key is none of this. The key is, oh, I erased it. The key is, I'm sorry. The key is LE, LE over, I need the larger LE over R, which consider both the boundary condition, consider the cross section, consider everything. Is that correct or not? L effective, etc. Which one is the largest? I have to calculate both of them. In order to calculate that, I need radius of? Direction. So let's calculate that. So ra radius of gyration for the z direction. Again, the same. This is same. These are effective length. The radius of gyration for the z. So r z. Uh, that's what I'm putting there. It becomes square root of i. I is how much? I is two third divided by area. Area is fixed. Area is two by one. Is that correct or not? Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. So you calculate that one. So for the Z, that becomes 0.577. What's the unit? Inch. inch, of course. This is inch to the power of 4 divided by inch to the power of 2. So it's inch square. The square root of that becomes inch. It has to be because radius of direction must be in length. It's a millimeter, but won't watch out for the unit. So Ry, which is radius of direction for the Y direction, becomes square root of? One six, because that was the i divided by two by one, which is point two eight nine inch. Now that I have both of them, sorry I have to go here, but you understand why I'm looking for Le over R, R together. So Le over because the condition are different. Remember, every time the condition is different, you don't know which way it's going to. Buckle. If the condition was the same, it would have buckled about the y-axis. That's no doubt about it. Is that correct or not? Yes. But since I'm changing the scenario, therefore here L, uh, L effective over R for the z-axis, or buckling about the z-axis, become L effective was 84 inches divided by Rz, which is 0.577. So it becomes 145 Point six. This is no unit because this is inch over inch. Everybody see that? Is that correct or not? Yes. All right. Now L E over R for the Y axis. Now the length is sixty inches divided by point two eight nine inches because I have to, and that one gives me two hundred. 07.6. Now, which way is going to buckle? It's going to buckle about the, of course, about the y-axis. Still is less, uh, more. Le over r is more. L is large, r is small, of course, relative to each other, everybody. So this is larger, but then look at the, this ratio. So therefore, that's, that's where we are. Then we put it in this equation to calculate that. So I'm going to use that equation because it's sitting there. So therefore, P critical is equal to pi square, 3.14 to the power of E. This is still, so 29,000 KSI multiplied by area, 2 by 1, divided by 
Le over R, which is 207.6. This is only a ratio. This doesn't have a unit. To the power of, don't forget that, to the power of 2. Many times a student forget about the unit. They divide foot by inch. I have seen that in 10, 20, 30 percent of the final. Don't do that. You cannot divide. This is given in foot. This is given in inches. This is usually typical of all the problem. Yes or no? So don't forget to multiply this by 12. You have to end up with inch over inch or foot over foot. Is that correct or not? Yes or no? Always I have seen that problem, which throws off all the design. Suddenly you're going from here to here. Everybody understand what I'm saying That Yes? So therefore, for that ratio, you will come out P critical to be equal to, I have it in the next page, P critical equal to 13.27. 13.27 or 20 point of K, oh, KIPS. Then, depend your what, what factor of safety, you can reduce that, depend what, like 1.85 or whatever. Is that correct or not? Now, you want to go back to this curve to know where we are. Notice, sigma yield for this is still is 36 KSI. Is that correct or not? Yes? Look at the sigma critical here. Sigma critical here is 13.27 kips. Force over the area, area is two times one. Is that correct or not? So we are at how many? 13 divided by two, we are at 6.63 case. You see that? That means we are very low compared to this. The sigma yield is six times that. Everybody under. Why this is so low? Why end up with so low? Because this is very long. Everybody understand that. This is not a good design. Everybody under. We cannot put too much load on it. Is that? But if we have to, that's the case. Is that correct or not? Yes? Notice, we are way down here. This is 36. We are down here because LERR -R is huge. So we are down one-sixth of that. We cannot put more than this. At that sigma is going to buckle. Everybody understand. At sigma equal to 6 KSI, 6.6 KSI, which is one sixth of sigma yield, is going to buckle. If you want to make it safer, of course, you can make the cross section larger or you can make it shorter. Everybody understand that. But shorter is not sometimes your choice because you have to design something, you have to make the cross section longer. Everybody understand what I'm saying that? Yes? Mm -hmm or support it one way or another by producing lateral support. Now, some of the examples that I have given you in the book, they created lateral support. For this one, the same way. Let's go back to the discussion that we have then. I should not tell you. You are supposed to know that. However, since this is first time you are seeing it, I better mention it because I don't want any difficulty there. There are one problem in particular. For example, it is a... That one is easy to see. There is a, a, a beam like that or a column like that, like this. Everybody see that. And on the bottom, it is fixed, the, the ground. So it's fixed and free. K is 2. Is that correct or not? But it, this, of course, we said it before. This is not going to buckle about the x axis. It's going to buckle about the y-axis. So in order to prevent that, they put here a cable like that. This is just for example, a cable like that. So what happened here? In this direction, when it comes toward us, this cable has no effect because the cable cannot protect it this way. This thing can come toward us. For about the x-axis, it's going to be fixed and free. Yes or no? But about the y-axis, it's going to be fixed and Pin, because if, if as soon as this wants to go that way, the cable push it back to the other. It, it bends. In other words, it goes like that. Yes or no? Is that correct or not? So from weak axis, it's fixed pin. On the strong axis, it's fixed and free. Which way is buckle? You have to find out. Again, like what I did here. The, the which way is buckle? You have to calculate LE over are based on the boundary code. That's the only thing you have to worry about. That formula will be given to you. Is that correct? Although by the time you do all your homework, you remember it, I'm sure. Yes or no? Is that correct or not? However, don't worry about that. Don't, what worry about it is parallel axis theory and how to calculate LE over 
are. Is that understood? Yes or no? There is another part of problem you have to know. Now let's look at this something else that I also <laughs> mentioned it for the other class. I also mentioned it for you. Let's say that the same column with the same cross section, I show you only like that. It's like this. I'm showing it sideways. This is the cross section is like that. White flange beam, is that correct or not? Which is here, it's sitting on top. Is that correct or not? Again, if I do this, let's put this pin, pin. So this is pin and pin. Of course, if pin, pin, and this length is equal to, let's say, 10 foot, my L effective is 10 foot. Is that correct or not? Yes, for both direction, because it's pin, pin, both in the X direction and the Y direction. But notice what we said. He said that if I look from the top, and from the top, this is what I see. This Ix is much larger than Iy. So it's going to buckle this way, yes or no? Correct? Correct? Yes, sir. Therefore, it's going to buckle this way about the y-axis. Now I come here, put a rod, just a rod, and hold it like that, like this. This is pin. What is this? Is this fixed? That's what I'm asking. You see, it looks like fixed, but it's not fixed. Pin, that's right, exactly. If I put here two rods and weld it together, but it's pointed rod, it is still, it manages, the column manages to go through. So in other words, this is what you are saying that. It may go like this. Sorry, it may go like that, then come back like that. Is that correct? So it is rotating. So that's not the fix. So by putting this and preventing that from like a cable, preventing that from going back and forth is not a fix. If I want to really make it fixed, I have to do this to it. Everybody understand what I'm doing. I have to put some here. Is that correct or not? Now you cannot, you see that? This is fixed. This is not fixed. Everybody see that? That is pointer. Is that correct or not? So please look at your book. Everybody, those of you who have the book, show it to somebody. So if you see a rod coming like that, just holding it like that, assume it is pin. It has to be covered in entire cross section like that to make it fix. Everybody, one more time. This is a fixed scenario. Everybody see what I'm talking about. This and that makes it fixed. Is that correct or not? This makes it pin. Is that understood? Okay, we go there. Now, like the other class, I have 15 minutes to go through the eccentric loading. Now, I have a series of problems of centric loading, eccentric loading. Unfortunately, I need at least about 45 minutes to go through the, all the discussion. I don't have that luxury. But I have this. I have this handout, so which you have. Some of you have your book with you. Go to the eccentric load, which is page 709. I can put it now here, there, because I put it on, on here. So let's look at that together. Projection on. That one down. So hopefully we see it still here. Hopefully, yes. If you need, I have an extra copy here. Anybody need that to want to write on it too? This is, you don't want to write in your note, especially if you have there. So take that and you want to make note about what I, want, I say to you. You want to write it down here. Quite frankly, I don't have time on this one. I am going to make it a little bit shorter because of lack of time. But sometimes this happened in the past too. So it's not all your fault. It's because it's a little bit math part of it. It's a little bit lengthy and as I said it before, we are going to talk about it. We are going to see what happened there, but then we are going to give you design pr criteria, which is totally different. So there are enough for everybody here. Anybody else here? OK, I don't know whether you see it there. It's a little bit. Uh, this is in your book, so here. Well, you have the book. Yeah, you want to write on it. OK. Anybody else? Have two more? By the way, I don't know what, you, what is your intention about this book. When you say you don't want to write your book, if I were you, I would keep this book. This book is one of those books you want to keep it forever 
Maybe have a couple of other version of the strength of material book. You see this book is good for ME 218, it's good for ME 219, and it, I can teach another course out of it. It's not it's still finished. And any time you read it again, you find something new in it too. So there are lots of material. This is still not been covered from this book. So it's everything is there. Everything you want to know about this strength of material is all in this book. Is that correct or not? So therefore, every engineer will keep one of these copy for reference. Oh, sorry. So anyhow, so what happened here, I'm going to explain that to you quickly here. So look at, this is a column, yes or no, correct? Oh, I need to pay, pay previous page. Let's go to previous page. You see, this is the column. That part of it, I better put it on the board because it is essential to understand what we are going to talk about it. The formula, I'm not worried about. You know why? Because it's so become uh, involved that you should not worry about that part of it. So what you should worry about is what you should understand from this part is this. First of all, this is the column. Still, we start with the roller and pin scenario, but this is the central centroid of the column, which is here, but the load is here, P. Everybody understand. The P is at the distance of E, which we call it eccentricity. Is that correct or not? So P is not at the middle of the column. Therefore, there is a distance E. This distance E to be, has to be evaluated for each column, and P is there. Then, of course, there is another one down here as well. There are, must be two forces equal and opposite. So I'm not, if I'm not drawing that, so just because of lack of time. So the forces are like that, being at eccentric loading, but this could be a support system, fixed support, so I usually do not put that. Nevertheless, this, as you know in the past, become equal to a force P and a moment at point A, which this if this was point A. And this is external. This is not internal. Everybody understand that. So you have here a beam <coughs> which is under axial load. And at the same time, there is a bending which causes this beam to bend. This is not a buckling. This beam, this column has a little bending because of this M. Everybody see what I'm talking about? If I look at that that way, is that what you have there? Is that correct or not? Therefore, it's going to bend like that. Is that correct? So this is the scenario. This beam is going to go through some slight, very slight, like what you see in the beam, very slight, which is calcul you can calculate that due to the bending. Is that correct or not? Yes? But since in this position, there is also an axial load, from this position, it may go through buckling. Everybody understand well, that already there is a bending there. So I have to somehow incorporate the bending and the buckling together. Everybody understand that. In order to do that, because this is two phenomena, bending is recognizable. You know that the bending is something you can calculate from the past. You have had this, a beam like that sitting on a support like that. This is M and then M. Everybody knows this beam is going to bend like that. Is that correct or not? Yes. However, as soon as I add this to it, P and P, this is really that problem. Yes or no? Then now it's going to buckle as well as that. So do, in order to do that, we do exactly the same thing as we did before. So I give it this a little cut like that. This, this is what I did last time. Yes or no? So I end up with internal forces and moment. These are now internal, the one in blue. So I have here a P and I have an M. That this time M equals minus P over PE. This is M, M A is called PE. And minus PY, like last time, because this distance was Y. So this M is a start from here to here, in other words. So if I put a P here, it is E plus Y. So that's what you see here. It becomes equal to minus P E plus Y. E due to the eccentric, Y because we are giving you this one, which is this is what we did last time. Nevertheless, when I put this into differential equation, this becomes E I D to Y over D X squared equal to minus P E minus P Y. And then I take the y to the other side, ei d2y over dx squared become equal to my pl plus, I'm sorry, plus py become equal to p minus pe. Then 
I do the same thing as I did last time. I took lambda square equal to a square root of p over ei. So in other words, divide that by ei, divide that by ei, and divide that by ei, ei goes to, this is the way you solve all the differential equation. This has to have zero uh, factor. So become y double prime plus lambda square y equal to minus lambda square e. So this becomes the only difference between my solution, which I represented like that, and what you see here. After they do that, look what happened the next. They used, oh, instead of lambda, they use a small p. But the small p and the large p get mixed together. I don't want you to do that. Everybody understand that. In the book, look, I go a little bit further. Look, when they write their differential equation, go there. You see that? They are putting d2y, everybody see that? d2y over dx squared plus what? This is p that is actually should be lambda. Is that kind of, I don't want this p to mix with the other p. Everybody, this is a small p, the other one is larger p. Look at this p, this p is large p, but I don't like that. Everybody, there are many old books where we, we used to use lambda rather than p. Everybody understand that. So remember that in the book, when they say, when I say lambda is lambda is square equal to p over ei, in this book, small p equal to capital p over ei, which is a little bit odd. Everybody understand what I'm saying? That yes or no? Correct? Yes. So all the equation is in terms of p. I rather write all the equation in terms of yes. lambda, and you see it in my also in my handout that I give later. Anyhow, this become your differential equation. So when this becomes a differential equation of this sort, because it has a polynomial here, or it has a constant there, and it has here, it has two solutions, part general solution and particular solution. Remember your differential equation? You have to get the two solutions, and you have to add it together. So the solution this time becomes equal to A sine of lambda x plus b cosine of lambda x, which is what we had last time. But this time, I have to have a solution for that one, which is minus e. You put that one, you will see that that works. So that is e, e again being the eccentricity. So this will become the solution. It works there. You can apply it. Take the first derivative, second derivative, put it there. It will work. So that this time, Again, you use at x equal to 0, y equal to 0. At x equal to L, y equal to 0. This time, b ends up not 0. Last time was 0. It become e, et cetera, et cetera. You go forward. Look, it become a little bit messy. Look what happened here. So I'm going line by one. You see, that's what they did. This is their solution. Because this is equation 1024. That's the solution. Everybody see?